Okay. Okay. So today the job is to uh, do uh, three things. One is to uh, finish off with uh, the ideas that we introduced last time as to how to speak in public and how to make it easier for yourselves. Now to demonstrate whether this really works, we want the remaining people to come here and use those principles when they stand up here and talk about what they want to say. It's quite interesting that even if you just have to talk about three things, disaster, success and what you want out of this course, three things. People don't do two of them or don't do one of them and stuff like that. They come here and forget about everything else and then go off on a tangent. So this just demonstrates that even for one minute you need to do some uh, preparation, right? Um, so see if the people who come now can utilize those ideas and speak. Like what did we say? Don't do this. Do this. Speak slowly. Speak confidently. We are all your friends. We are not here to hurt you. We want you to do well. We want you to speak nicely and we are dying to learn a little bit more about you, right? We want to be entertained. Don't bore us and don't go over time, okay? So everybody here finds this part interesting because they want to know more about their friends. Ideally something humorous which they might not have told them before or something meaningful which they can talk about later on and follow up. Some part of yourself which you maybe have not spoken about which you can share, you know, makes other people also feel comfortable that look I'm not the only one right so what we'll do today is you all know uh, the groups that you're in incidentally uh, they've been put up on the website who doesn't know what the group number is okay so I have a sheet here you can refer to that and uh, see what group uh, you're on and it's quite interesting I went through all the feedback that we've been recording on video and one thing is consistently the theme. Most of the things is stage fright, right? And most people want to be able to talk publicly, effectively, right? I guess that's what you mean by communication skills. So we have something interesting uh, lined up now. Okay, so you have to pitch an idea. So we thought of this nation building theme, right? Social innovation, technology innovation, some, 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 some hadsa or anecdote which has some meaning that you want to recall, you might refer to that, right? And you have to pitch it to an audience which comprises someone who's going to, who you want to believe in this idea, right? Some angel investor or some uh, social investor or whatever it is, right? Uh, if you can't think of any great idea, see, all of you have come from very interesting backgrounds. I feel that urban existence is pretty boring. Right? If you come from a small town, you had the opportunity to see life in the raw and much more of it. So you have something interesting to say. You might not think it's a, it interesting, but others might think it's interesting. Right? And if you, put it up, if you put that up on YouTube, there'll be millions of people who think it's interesting. Because what you have experienced is very unique, which is very different and distinct what other people have, have experienced. Like for instance, I saw a program last night on how Global warming is affecting farmers in Greece. And they took ordinary people from a little village which has been affected by a big fire that broke out in the forest which affected all their olive trees and what happened as a result of that. Global warming means less bees and less orchards and how the entire economy has changed, tourists have stopped uh, visiting that place and so on. And it's ordinary villagers, Greek schoolgirls, school children, people from that town. I found it very interesting. Because they are echoes of similarities of this experience, if you like, all over the world. Okay, so you might not think that what you have to say is interesting, but actually others might think. And if you see the great novels which are written, the novels are written about everyday life, what goes on, say, in a small town. But you, 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 you put it in a very descriptive way so that someone else can get into your shoes and experience that life, which might be very, very different from what somebody else might experience, okay? And if you are still hard pressed for ideas, right? So I feel that you all have an interesting story. Each one of you has got not one, but many interesting stories to tell. It's just that when we put you in a group of six, right? All of you might have ideas and you'll have to come to a consensus as to what is the story that you all can agree to uh, tell. Uh, if you are, still short of ideas, right? Here's another idea. 
Professor Sridhar Iyer has written some very interesting articles in Jantar Mantar magazine. How many of you have heard of Jantar Mantar? Jantar Mantar is a magazine which is put out by a, a bunch of IIT students and uh, an alumni from various IITs, IIT Madras especially. And this is about 25, 30 years old and so on. It still might exist. So Sridhar wrote some articles on computer science concepts explained to children. Right? So like for instance, he explained networking to children. How would you explain networking, a TCP IP network? to a nine standard child, right? You can't use buzzwords, you can't use mnemonics, you can't use jargon because often people hide behind jargon. When they don't know anything, they just give jargon and that person doesn't understand but is afraid to ask, right? We do it all the time, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> right? It's very different, it's very different and it's very difficult to explain complex things in a simple language. And it's a very good exercise because then you have to really understand what you're saying, right? So here's the idea. Sridhar has written some 12 articles on computer science concepts. Like for instance, he's explained networking as how there's a princess who's in a, a tower. I remember him discussing this story with me. Princess is in a tower. Her kind of prince wants to, uh, to communicate with her. So he finds the medium of pigeons. So the pigeons, what he does is, is, is that he takes his long message to her out and breaks it up in small, small chits because a pigeon can't take an entire notebook, you know, right? So he breaks it into small, small chits and the pigeons take the chits one by one to her. Then she has the problem, what order do I <laughs> look at these messages in, right? So how do you sequence that and get the order right and stuff like that? That's what networking is all about. So he introduced the concept in a way at a level that children could relate to and explained it in terms of that. Just imagine if others would explain things to us like that, how, how easier it would be to understand uh, concepts, right? Same thing which you use mathematics for, you can e explain like this. So Sridhar has got 12, 12 stories if you like. Your job is to think of how to make a TED talk about it. So how to explain this in a TED talk. Okay, so think about that. And to explain this concept, you can take advantage of videos from here and there, right? Because it's much easier to see animation and understand things. So his Oscar project has got lots of technology animations, which maybe you can use as part of your TED talk to explain, right? But the burden of explanation, simplifying and all that, much of the work has been done here, but you have to now present it on stage to nine standard kids. And I warn you, I'm going to get nine standard kids that day to attend the talk and we'll take a poll, right? Uh, that's one. Samir Sasrabhudeya, a colleague uh, here, uh, he's worked a lot in distance education and all that. He's got some YouTube videos. There are three videos that came to my mind. One is fun with uh, science. The other is on uh, technology enabled agriculture, which is uh, the work of a company called Agrocom and uh, the Aqua project which, uh, which emerged out of uh, our department. And sunlight at night, right? This is how some, some village school kids in Madhya Pradesh were given the opportunity to study at night because of uh, the, the work of uh, faculty at IIT Bombay, Chetan Solanki. Have you heard of his project? Uh, solar PV based uh, lighting for villages and so on. He gave a very interesting talk about how to uh, solar energy equip an academic campus, right? How to figure out how to do it, right? This was yesterday evening at about 5 in mechanical engineering. Very interesting. So he gave the entire scope of the technology of solar, how to, how to essentially design a system to service, say, lighting requirements or, or other requirements that an academic campus might have, right? The reason I'm interested is that if we have lots and lots of distributed greenhouses and we have to drive the power in those greenhouses, then it makes a lot of sense to have solar panels, right, in this kind of uh, setting, right? So I was interested in attending that talk. So these are three talks from there. Then there's another site which is very interesting <coughs> called arvindguptatoys.com. So he has little toys made from everyday items like straws and cork and wood and this and that which you just find anywhere 
and he makes toys which which illustrate some scientific principle right he doesn't tell you what the scientific principle is it's up to you to decide like there could be something with straws and you spin it it's meant to demonstrate centrifugal force right he won't tell you that but that principle is embodied in that toy so here's an idea that you can pick a toy like this and he's got a video of that toy right and it, and 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 pitch that concept to a ninth standard child okay so you have the visuals already so you can incorporate that in your talk in your material and uh, you can make your uh, presentation so here you have a bunch of ideas so i we didn't want to constrain you saying that do this do that and all that do anything that excites you but it should excite you you should be passionate about it and at the end we want a nice presentation which we shall put up as our contribution to youtube which illustrates something important and interesting which we feel others will also want to see and we'll give you all the help along the way right so that's uh, what i have to say here any questions so what we'll be doing now is that to just get you started in the process so what i'll do now is uh, uh let me just finish with uh, the concepts that uh, uh professor vedya spoke i'll just review this with you right how you speak now because we want the next or the as many remaining people as they are there so what we'll do is it's almost 9 o'clock now right i mean 10 o'clock now and uh, for the next uh, say 15 minutes we'll continue with the video presentation i'm hoping by say about just after mid sem we complete all the videos of all the individuals and uh, then we should have another lot at the end of the uh, uh, the course uh, when you actually do your uh, ted talks and hopefully then we'll see before and after also right so again when you come now speak deliberately speak slowly have some cue cards if you like and uh, be explicit in your articulation don't slur aaram se baat karo don't vocalize things like um r you know all those kind of things are uh, all that kind of stuff nobody likes to uh, hear that don't fiddle or twitch right it shows a uh, nervousness and look at the audience right don't look down don't look at the wall or something find some people who you know are your friends and friendly and just talk to them if you like you know but pan the audience okay and uh, don't exceed time <laughs> don't go on for minutes so anyway uh, this is where we are and uh, what we'll do now is that we'll take the remaining uh, students who uh, who not presented and uh, 10:15 is uh, the time out for that right and uh, for the next 10 minutes after that we will uh, break up into the groups and get started with our discussions so let me have a feel for what each group wants to do if you don't know what your group is i have a list here and you can uh, uh, see it this promises to be an interesting exercise and then from after mid sem we will have only one hour of contact a week so we'll split you up into two batches one batch will come on tuesday one batch will come on thursday you don't have a choice which batch <laughs> you'll belong to we'll just go by roll number order otherwise it gets very confusing okay so i'm going to close my shop here and uh, we'd like the rest of the people to come i have a list of people who haven't come by the way <laughs> so if nobody volunteers maybe we'll start from the back this time right so uh, who's right at the back not the ta's the ones after the ta's that person who's looking away have you come <laughs> yeah have you spoken acha next to you he needs a minute to just make some notes next to him yourself so 
while they're getting ready, any brave people, well, other than them, who were scheduled to talk last time? Amandeep has already spoken, right? Okay. Anybody here that I don't recognize yet? You've not spoken, right? Okay, maybe you can come next. In the meantime, we'll start from the back now. Yeah, so we have one here. You're saved by. Okay. You can take this whole bundle, actually. Oh, why don't you hold it here? So this is Durgesh, I am from Mumbai, I am a new PhD student over here. Uh, I have been uh, working as a lecturer in BITS Goa for about a year and before that I did my BTEC and MTEC from there. So one example of good communication is when I was able to motivate my students to you know, think of the algorithms. The way we study algorithms, we just learn it, uh, you know, we, we don't think it out. So uh, that was a really good example of good communication. One really horrible example of communication is uh, when I was in standard eight, I think, I had a typical three idiots moment. Uh, I had to give a Marathi me speech and I had just memorized the entire speech. My parents had written it down for me. I understood no word in it. I had just mugged it up. And in the middle, I just forgot, forgot as in I was blank. So I, I, I just said, I'm not going to continue this anymore. I went back and then the teacher called me back again and I had to complete it. So it was really embarrassing. And I, but that day I decided I'm not going to memorize any speech ever in my life. Whatever I do, I'll do it, you know, whatever I can think at the moment. So what I expect from this course is, uh, the tidbits of wisdom that uh, the professor says in between, like uh, that day he said a very uh, interesting point that people are very uh, interested in honesty. They don't care uh, what accent you have or how many times you're slurring. As long as you stand there and you're honest, uh, people don't really bother about how you speak. So I, from this course, I'm looking for such tidbits of wisdom in addition to that, if we can have some TED Talks, uh, it will be really good. So that's it from me. Uh, good morning to all of you. I am Bholanath Rai. I am a PhD uh, student in computer science. Uh, the last day I attended the co lecture, how to be a public speaker, and I tried to apply the same thing in the, in the presentation by it was a total mess. Uh, although I have uh, knowledge about the, uh, my project, but when I just uh, present the um, concept, I just totally miss, I mean, uh, I was in a hurry. And after finishing my talk, when I was sitting in the uh, bench, I thought, oh, this can I can this uh, concept I can explain it better way. That was a recent uh, disaster, but one funny uh, communication disaster was in first year of my B Tech because uh, actually uh, I am a I am actually Bengali. The till uh, eight twelfth um, class I totally studied in Bengali, so no uh, nothing about Hindi. So I was in first year. One senior came. And he just uh, explained some uh, told about my senior, and I thought he is actually telling everything good, and I just say yes, and I he just uh, slapped me, and he said uh, that all I just uh, tell about your senior, it's a slang language, and the good uh, communication about is that from the f uh, interview faced during my PhD, the uh, that uh, communication I. I gave the interviews totally. It's a, I never fail uh, f uh, tensed. It's a before this interview. Every every viva or interview I before going to the uh, lab I means uh, room. My heartbeat actually means every time it increases. Even 
this is the uh, no, this is the day before every time it comes that uh, my turn will come my heartbeat actually turns means it's increasing today i just say that nobody is coming i then i just say better to mm, finish my introduction otherwise every day i will <laughs> see it there and uh, my heartbeat will go and increasing and my wish list is uh, i want to be a good leader and for every good leader is a good speaker i want to be a uh, good speaker and every uh, talk i just listen and I attend that their body language the way they uh, speak and we just uh, i just uh, listen carefully and i thought that one day i will become a that good leader that's why Hi, my name is Rucha Kulkarni, and I'm from Solapur, Maharashtra. And uh, about good uh, communication skills, um, the examples for good communication that I've had are actually, uh, thankfully, many. Uh, like some presentations and seminars, all usually go well. Uh, about bad uh, examples or disasters, I don't remember any. And uh, about the wish list, uh, I would like to learn about uh, group discussion skills. Because it is very important that I learn uh, how to put my points assertively in a group discussion without uh, barging in or cutting through anyone else who is speaking. Um, that's it. Hi, this is Srihar Samahapatra. I am from uh, NPCI in Bombay. I have been uh, here for around eight years. So uh, my uh, worst things I have done in communication lacking lacuna are the missing places, going to wrong places where address is correct, and uh, writing wrong text where the question is different, and understanding what others say in a different level and a different uh, problem. So about good communications, I have many good uh, suggestions in our organizations and good uh, project works. Uh, but I want to learn from this uh, course about verbal communication and uh, listening and uh, uh, explaining what I am saying in uh, words as well as uh, in written. So that's it. Good morning everyone, I am Hemant Kumar Adil, uh, I am from Raipur, uh, about a uh, good example of my, com uh, good example of communication is uh, uh, my interview for uh, uh, integrated MSc program for NISR institute and uh, about bad uh, example, uh, I had many, uh, one was uh, uh, during my uh, uh, presentation in my BTEC. Uh, I prepared uh, slides and I explained to explain everything to my uh, teammates, but <laughs> I had no time to prepare for myself. <laughs> and uh, I want to learn in this course about uh, how to face uh, uh, unknown audience. Hello, I am Meghisham Prasad. I am from Kolhapur. I am working here under supervision of Professor Sharachandran. Chandran. 
so the disaster I have uh, in my experience is uh, basically when I uh, have a heated discussion with my colleagues uh, regarding some technical. So I say some unintended words. So actually I had one bad experience that uh, when I was speaking with my manager regarding our project requirements, uh, I many times uh, used word rubbish and it affected my appraisal very badly. <laughs> so another, uh, so that is about disaster. Uh, so the uh, good communication skill, I don't have that good communication skill, but if I want to give a good example of communication, uh, I will say Obama winning elections in 2008 is a very good example of uh, good communication skills. And uh, for my wish list, I want to be a good summarizer. I am not uh, currently that good summarizer, mainly in uh, written as well as uh, public speaking. Thank you. Hello, good morning everyone. I am Ashok. So I joined PhD here in January just a month ago. Um, I have a lot of uh, good experience like, is this working properly? So I am finding some kind of, okay, now? Yeah, it's better. Ashok Kumar C. So I am from Tamil Nadu, a place called Salem. Anyone know Salem? Yeah. Good. Okay, I can talk with your words. <laughs> so, uh, as far as good communication is concerned, I have uh, plenty of good communication. So, where to start? Okay, during my bachelor degree, so I talked uh, for nearly some three hours. I ate up all the classes on that day. Uh, the speech was uh, like you know about the current scenarios of political issues and all those things, and. Apart from that, there was a lecture, uh, there was a workshop in 2012 um, in Pune Defense Institute of Advanced Technology where I completed my MTech. So the lecture was, the workshop was on uh, challenges in cloud computing. Uh, so I presented for some 45 minutes about uh, the working of OpenStack and the issues in it. That was a good example. and. The worst exam, worst, I mean, bad communication means during that, after that workshop, there's a QA session. So one person was asking this question and I was not able to get the question. And it was like, you no, know, I was not even able to get what he's trying to say. I don't know whether it's because of the mic or his bad communication, I don't know. But uh, I understood in a different way and I answered to him in a bad manner and I criticized him on the stage itself and I asked him sorry and another blender was I didn't notice that mic is off mic is on when I was off the stage and I was saying to my friend are yaar kya bakwas question tha ye ye lecture suna nahi de kya ho they say I don't know it got you know how funny it is I mean it was so embarrassing and after that I personally asked him sorry and it was quite a worst experience and uh, okay the next thing is what I'm, I wish to learn from this course. Honestly, I'm not uh, here to learn all the good stuff. I'm here to learn all the bad stuff, all the mistakes what people do. So I want to learn from the mistakes. I don't want to do that same mistakes which I know. Most of the times we do, I mean, for me, doing mistakes is not a problem. But not learning from the mistakes is the biggest problem. Repeating the mistake is like, you know, falling into the same hole again and again. I don't want to repeat that. So that's my thing. Okay, thank you. Hello friends, uh, myself Suren Duhan. I'm doing a PhD under Dr. Rishikesh Joshi. Uh, I'm from Faidabad. 
uh, about the bad communication skills. Uh, so when I was 10 or 12 years old, and I was called for a chief guest in a function. And it was a chess tournament. And uh, everyone knew me because I was a champion for about three years continuously. So I was being called for a uh, chief guest for that particular tournament. And I was a champion in that particular tournament also. And I didn't know what to say on the stage. And I didn't know what to do. Because till that time, I was receiving the prizes from the other people. And I was listening what they say. They say uh, some motivating talks and some other things. And now I have to present the things. And I was on the stage, sitting in the center, on the, uh, somewhere between the other people. And I was blank. Then somebody called me. Now the chief guest will say a few words to you. And I couldn't stand up. I was shivering, sitting there, and doing nothing. So, it was a silence in the hall for about 2-3 minutes. And chief guest was about to say something and it's a silence in the hall for 2-3 minutes. Then what they did is, they brought up the mic to the desk itself. <laughs> so that he can speak something. And still I couldn't speak anything. And then after a minute or two, I just said thank you. <laughs> and it was done. That was the best speech ever done by a chief guest, <laughs> which every audience will like. <laughs> so it was the disaster, kind of a disaster. And it was not like I, I was in the front of a completely new audience. I knew everyone sitting there. It was I am playing for about three, four years continuously. I know everyone sitting there. And still I couldn't speak on the stage. And about the good communication skill was when, it again goes back when I was young itself, uh, seventh class. We were about 12 or 13 years old again. And we had to present some speech on the stage. When it was a class, a classroom, I could speak very well, uh, easily. I didn't take any notes and all on my hand. And I had to go on the stage and I presented my speech. It was done. Then, uh, it was just a class, fine. When I went to the uh, prayer hall, uh, exactly the main ground, there we had to present it in the complete of the complete, uh, present it in front of the complete school. And I was being called, initially I was shivering and all again, because I couldn't speak in front of the whole school. Uh, I knew my class, but I don't know the other people. And I, somehow I got the strength, I went to the stage, and now I spoke completely different thing from what I spoke in the classroom. And still, it was somewhat related to what the topic was. And I could present what the topic is to the people who are unknown of the topic. Like similarly, uh, about the compilers, uh, people who are not from computer science, if you tell about them what is the compiler is, you have to come up with different examples. So that thing started coming up in the mind. And I started making new and new examples out of the field. And I was able to present it to the audience, which is not of the relevant field. Now about the course. What remains here? Is anything remaining? There is a bad communication skill. There is a good communication skill. If something is remaining. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The wish list. Is anything remaining? What I need to expect from the course. It's like HS 699 is mandatory for everyone. I have joined the course. Now, what is expected from the course? What all you guys are expecting is collaborate everything. Just give it to me. Like everyone is expecting something, 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 something. Club all thing, give it to me. I'm expecting that. Thank you.
Uh, hello, I'm Varnali. I'm from West Bengal. Uh, so uh, I'm just new joined PhD. I'm working under Professor Khirkar sir and Professor Biswas sir uh, in compiler field. So before joining here, I was working in Qualcomm. And to talk about best communication I had there is like I had to give a um, technical uh, talk to my team. And my uh, fortunately or unfortunately, my manager was very buggy and he was never like satisfied with anything and during the appraisal meeting he always used to put the bad things first so like he will get depressed throughout the meeting so uh, that time my manager was present and i was giving the talk so first time he appreciated me so uh, i feel that was the best communication that i could make him understand what my point was and to talk about bad communication i remember i was in 10th standard and i was uh, a participa I was participating in an extempo and uh, so it was something, the topic was something related to my school only and I was, uh, while, while I was giving the speech, so uh, suddenly uh, I was giving it very well, it was going very smooth but suddenly I was blank and for, uh, I spoke something but I didn't know what I spoke for last 30 seconds. So after that when my I, I came to know, okay, I am, my mind is totally blank. I was not able to relate what I talked about last 30 seconds. So then I abruptly stopped there. So that was the bad, I mean, that is a disaster I had. And wish list is what uh, just last person told. Just club everything and give it to us. <laughs> okay, thanks. Hello. Oh, sorry. Hello, I am Sukhdev from Sonabhadra, Uttar Pradesh. Uh, my communication disaster was uh, uh, seminar presentation in BTEC uh, third year. And uh, I can't explain uh, anything. I know about, uh, I know uh, seminar topic, all, all topic in um, seminar, but I can't explain uh, anything uh, in audience. And, but my good communication, I have not any good communication. I want to this uh, subject, get confident and uh, uh, ma how to manage the people. Thank you. Now that Professor Fatak is here, I can quite confidently say that we won't transact any more business. <laughs> he will speak for five minutes. But he's come at the end vakt, as they say. And uh, he's got some things that he wants to share with you. So what we'll do is that we will we will take this uh, consultation about what the groups, uh, the topics that they will do offline. And uh, we'll do it through uh, Google spreadsheets and uh, stuff like that. I've given you enough material to kind of uh, go off and, and, and uh, discuss. So really, I didn't expect anything more in this class than forming you into groups but if you know who your groups are is not an issue you can go and have chai with them and kind of uh, get started with your discussions right so uh, we are happy to have with us this morning padma shri deepak fatak who needs no introduction but he will introduce himself anyway Padmasri is the least important component that is useful to us at the moment. <laughs> this class is about communication, so let's talk about effective communication briefly. Uh, I will actually be engaging you in one or two lectures. I think post mid sem is what we have planned. Uh, but I wanted to share with you the theme that I will be speaking on and some homework that I want you to do. Uh, I will primarily be speaking on ethics, very specifically commenting against plagiarism and how plagiarism happens even inadvertently. Simultaneously, my emphasis will be on increasing the quality of your written articulation. Spoken articulation, as many of you have seen yourselves, uh, I think each one of you would know by now that you can do much better than what you are doing today. Each one of you. And that applies to everyone including me. So there is no end to the learning of effective communication. It is a lifelong process. But the earlier you do, the better it is for you. That's the idea. 
Now, both spoken and written articulation, one of the cribs that I have heard from students like you is that, sir, English is not our mother tongue and therefore we are not comfortable. And therefore, we use English language incorrectly, both while speaking and while writing. And I will tell you that is the biggest nonsense. Because if you claim that it is so because your English is not your mother tongue, please try to speak in your own mother tongue. Please try to write in your own mother tongue. Do that and then get whatever you write or get whatever you speak checked by someone else who knows that language well. I can guarantee that you will have umpteen mistakes there as well. And that is because and this afflicts the entire society, by the way, so you are a sample of the same society from which I come, all of you come. This happens because we as a society have been much less careful about our articulation than what we ought to. Developed societies pay enormous amount of efforts to teach younger people how to articulate well, both written and oral articulation. Now, unfortunately, our syllabi in the schools and colleges are getting cramped with so-called academic contents and therefore for such contents which are extremely valuable in life there is hardly any time that's why we are doing it at this late stage now the task that i want to give you is i was interviewed once oops no. modern technology am i audible still the technology is rugged, that means, keep it in the box. So, I was interviewed, I think, more than a year ago. Uh, there is a magazine called Rain Tree. Are you familiar with that? It's the IIT Bombay magazine. It comes out every quarterly or something like that. Now, I do not have the exact uh, uh, web reference, but I think I had downloaded that PDF file of that particular article, and if you have a course Moodle, uh, Firuza will request to put it on the course mood. So that's an interview that was published. It was, uh, it's a fairly long interview. It talks about ethical standards and so on. From a communication point of view, I would like you to do two things. One, find out all errors in that write-up. Okay. Fortunately, I have not written it, so I won't take the blame. Although I did speak on whatever they have captured. And believe me, people take reasonable amount of efforts to ensure that the written articulation, particularly one which is printed in uh, issues such as Rentry or whatever, are they, they are done very carefully. And yet, we find mistakes galore. Okay. Professor Prakash Vaidya, in fact, has a special expertise in finding out errors in the final proofread uh, releases of variety of brochures and so on. So, we, there would be some errors. There is only one request. This error finding has to be done by each individual alone. This is not a group exercise. So, taking help of someone, are kya error mila jara, idhar bhi bata de. Is, is plagiarism. Is absolute plagiarism. You are stealing somebody else's work and posing it as if it is your own. That is not to be done, period. I do not mind if someone says, look, I did not get time. And therefore, I have not been able to do anything. That is acceptable to me. But anybody even consulting a friend obtrusely just to get some hints on what could be the errors is a no-no. The idea is not to find how perfectly you can find all errors. That is not possible for any human being because there will always be errors after errors have been found. So, writing English is not much different from writing software. Just as you know, you can never prove that your software is bug-free can never prove that an articulated passage in written English or Hindi or Marathi or Telugu is bug free. There will be bug. But so you have, to, you have to point out those errors. I will try and put out the mechanism. There is a PDF file. So you can convert it into the word. By all means, use uh, uh, office uh, uh, assistants to find out uh, spelling errors and, and grammatical errors or something. But I will warn you that English is a very funny language. In a one-page write-up which I had given about 20 years ago for one of my promotional interviews, uh, I had written in my career and I had misspelled career as carrier. And carrier is a correct English word, so the software did not crib. And when I saw Professor Mahabala who was on the interview committee, 
smiling at some point and then showing it to another expert, I immediately realized that that was the mistake. So these things happen. Be careful. The second thing I want you to do is, I have recounted a few incidents which happened in my life, which buttressed my resolve to be very ethical in my behavior. I am sure there would have been occasions in your lives also. Somewhere, sometime. Okay? 19, 20 years is a lot of years that you have spent. You would have come across someone. It could be a simple person. It could be a very important person, whatever. But some incidents which showed to you that this is ethical behavior. And you felt like emulating that person or that. I would like you to write that incidents in your own words, short story. So I'm asking you to write a story. The second part you can start doing now. You have a lot of time. Of course, you have mid -sames, so after the mid -sames. But I would like that to be submitted before the, before the lecture that I take, because I would like to go through those uh, before I take that. So is that OK, or is it too heavy an assignment? You have to write a story. You have to find English errors. Frankly, that's the, that's the problem. Uh, if you ask me, story writing will prove a bit more uh, time consuming because you can write the story in the first shot, but I would like you to make your best effort. It need not be a long five page story, although I have nothing against that. It could be a very short story, but, but a story which has hit you somewhere in 19 years saying, yes, this behavior is a good human behavior. And given a chance, I would like to emulate that. Any incident, whether it could be with your parents, your brothers, your cousins, your neighbors, young children, simple people that you meet on the street. Believe me, ethics can be learned from each and every human being. So there will be some instance. Describe that in your own words. Is that fair? Thank you so much. All the best.